Hello and in today's System32 programming I'm going to be doing a USB bootloader. I'm not going to type this manually out today. I'm just going to give you an overview of the class that I created and some demos for it. So first the header of this bootloader. I create a type there for the application jump so that we have a callback or I can at least assign a type to the jump function. We have a class declaration for the bootloader which inherits the flash API that I've done previously. Then we have have a two defines that are private to the bootloader class which is head one and head two we'll get to the explanation how that works later then we have a numerator which is for a protocol definition so how the frame looks and which state it is in then we have another numerator for the different frames that we are going to be sending max frames is just a variable to signify the maximum number of frames so we have three different types of frames we have the start frame we have the flash frame and then we have the end frame then our constructor which just takes in the application address a function data in that takes in the data that we are going to flash to the mcu so this is going to be the application data then we have a function that is jump to application which just basically jumps to the application then we have variables our application address that we store so where we are going to jump to for the application our function pointer that we are jumping to and then the vector table offset as well. Then we have a state variable which is going to be for a state machine as you can see here that just holds the state, a buffer to pull in data, a buffer indexer, this can, well I'm calling it count but it's an indexer, a buffer length and then a data count. So this keeps track of where we are in our data and a type of frame and a page offset so that we know where we are writing to in the flash memory. Okay, so then we have a function that's state reset that just resets the entire state machine state machine run the state machine flash data writes data to the flash from the application and then finish well finishes the bootloader okay looking at the translation unit the c++ file in our bootloader we set the application address to application address we set our initial state as head one our buffer count is zero our data length is zero data count is zero our frame type as frame max our page offset to the application application address so this is going to be where we're going to start flashing in data then we do a simple setup we get a vector table offset and then we get the jump address as well and we clear out the memory buffer then we have a function that's just data in that ingests the data that we are writing to the flash so that just iterates over and feeds the data to the state machine state reset basically does this does the same as the constructor just resets these variables to their original state and and then we have the state machine, which takes in a uint8 as a singular data. So we're processing the data, as you can see here, with this for loop one by one from our data buffer that comes in. Then we go through our different states. Now, to understand the states, we need to look at the three frames that's that I came up with. So we have our base frame, which contains a header, a length, and a packet type, and then data. Typically, you will have a CRC at the end of this, but since we're doing USB, USB already has a CRC, so it's not required. Required. Okay, so we have a start of frame which is always led by the binary value AA and BB just to indicate that the frame is starting. Then we followed by a two bytes, so U in 16 of length, which is in big Indian data, and then a packet type, which is one byte, and then a variable length of data. Okay, so our first frame is start of data, so this just tells us the state machine we are starting, reinitialize all your states. So say I'm in the middle of a flash data frame and I send the start data frame it will reset the state machine that we can do whatever from the start this is a very simple it has a data length of one and the packet type is zero zero which indicates start then we have data which is zero zero the data is irrelevant it's just there to work around the protocol we have an end of frame which is effectively identical as the start frame the only difference is it's, it's packet type is zero two which indicates the end and then we have a flash data frame which contains our flash data so for a single page on this particular SDM it's one kilobyte in size that's why I picked 124 as the length for this frame and then the packet type is 01 to flash the data and then we have our data that is the physical data from the binary itself so our state machine it checks for the first header byte which you can see here is AA if it's not the header byte then we go to state reset then we go to the next state then we check for the second head which is 0xbb if it's not 0xbb we ignore it then we 
go to the next state, which is the length state. Then our private data length variable is shifted by eight for MSB format. And then we move to the second length state. So once another char is processed, then we just or our data length. Then we have the length that our packet's going to be. Then we have the type. So if the type of the packet is greater or equals to the max frame value, we reset the state machine. Then we store the frame type. Then we check if the frame type is a starter frame, we go to state and we go to restart, which again restarts the state machine. Then if we have a frame type of flash frame, we go to the data read state. Then if our frame type is an end frame, we go to state end. Okay. So we are going to assume we've received a flash frame. Then we're going to go to the data read state. Now the data read state just processes in the data. We check if the buffer count is greater than the data length. We go to state reset. Something went wrong. We state reset. Otherwise, we store the data that came in into the buffer and we increment the buffer count by one. And if the buffer count is greater or equals the size of the current buffer, so the one kilobyte size, we flash the data into the STM32 at its offset. Then we have data count, which we increment by one. So that's the buffer count and then the data count. Okay. So now we check if we are at the end of our frame data. If our buffer count is greater than the data length and our data length is not equal to the size of the buffer, we do a flash data and then we do a state reset immediately after. So end of frame does of course the finish function and does a state reset if it actually shouldn't return at all. As I see there's a system reset over there and then we have restart which just restarts the state machine. If anything's not correct in the state machine or the state goes out, out of bounds, we reset the state machine. Okay. Then we have our finish function which has a magic number. It doesn't matter, really matter what this number is. It will come into play later and we write this magic number to a flash address. I can't remember why I picked this one but it's probably because I reserved a block of memory to write this and then we do a system reset. Now the knob is here for debugging purposes. It's not required. Then we have flash data which we simply do a write to the page offset, a buffer and then data length. Let me just double check this. I have a small bug here. State reset should also reset the application address. Yeah. Okay so we write the page offset, we write the buffer, the internal buffer and the data length to the flash at the page offset Then we increment our page offset by one flash page and we reset our buffer count. Now we have our jump to application, simple jumps to the application. So here we set our vector table offset, we set the main stack pointer to the vector tables pointer, then we call the function pointer for the application jump which is here. Okay, then we go to main. Now in our main we have this pre function that we call. All I'm doing here is doing some checks before we jump to the bootloader application itself. So I have the a GPI open state and I create a flash API object and I set a magic number to zero. So here I enable the clock for the for GPIOB. I initialize the GPIOB as a input with a pull up. I read the state of the GPI open and then I also read the flash for the magic number that I'm looking for. So you can see this flash address and this one matches up. Yeah. Then immediately after I've read the pin, I deinitialize the GPIO pin and then I disable the uh, clock for that GPIO pin. Then I do two checks. Is my pin set? If it is set, return. If my magic number is there, then return. This is just so you don't need to hold the button down. If you have an unflashed application, if both these checks fail, then I create an instance of the bootloader and I just jump to the application. This also avoids that I don't need to backwards initialize the MCU. So after we have exit our bootloader call, we will go to main, initialize as normal, create our USB device class, initialize our USB, then we create our bootloader class again and initialize it to the application offset that we want to set. We create a data in buffer, we clear that buffer out and then we just start reading the state of the USB if there's data for us to receive and we echo that data that we have received back and, and we clear out the buffer. All right, I believe I have erased this chip. Let's just double check. Okay, erasing is done. Then we go into debug mode. Okay. okay, let's see why it's not compiling. Happens when you fix bugs while you're trying to record. That should be an underscore application to reset it. Okay, great stuff. Then we run our bootloader debug. This is fairly straightforward. Let's just have a look at the checks. We reset our MCU. We can see we're over here. We look at the pin state. The pin state is set over okay and our 
our magic number is let's say hexadecimal some random number doesn't really matter what it is so because our magic number is not set correctly we are going to go to our application code so we step into now you can see we are the system initialize and the liberating it then we want to go to our main.c and here it will initialize the bootloader eff effectively now the application that we are going to flash is our blinky application now for our blinky application we need to modify the project again we need to make this bin file produce otherwise by default if you look at the usb bootloader output files you'll see there's no bin file over here so to make it compile a bin file you have to go to properties then your settings and then tool settings uh, mcu post build output and you need to tick this convert to binary file or dash o binary order to output a bin file okay so you can copy this over now the next thing is we need to have an application to flash the binary so i have this blink app binary file which is essentially a copy of the the app link file and then i have this python script that simply opens a com port and does some of the flashing for us okay so this application reads the entire binary file so this app link file reads it into memory then i split this binary up then i figure out how many what my split sizes are going to be for the binary and then we do a, a well we split the data up into slices of 124 bytes per slice and then any remainder we add as the final slice then we define our frames here so aabb as our header our data length is going to be one it's just how my code works it's not exactly how i want it to work but meh good enough for demonstration then i format the data length as big indian over here and then i just append the frame so that's the start of frame the flash frame actually takes in a 128 kilobyte we check the length and then we format it as big indian in binary mode we set the type of the frame as 01 we set the data as equals to the flash data and then we assemble the frame effectively and same story with an end frame the only type difference is the type of frame that we're sending okay then we open a serial port my usb device comes up as com8 you'll have to change it however you want then we send a start of frame we take start and zip the range of it so we can just produce a nice bar for it and then we just read then we push out the start of frame out we just read back whatever whatever we got i'm using mirror framing so whatever i send it has to send back and this is my validation check if it fails we close the serial port and we say we've not acknowledged then we start with our data frames which is effectively the same we just take our data and d as d then we construct our flash frame and then we send our flash frame over and then we send an end frame so currently i'm running the bootloader as you can see on the side and if i run this code it didn't work let's see why okay we check the state so it did not run let's try this again okay so it does actually reset the mcu we check this should now jump to bootloader just set that and we run again so apparently this caused an issue. Hmm. Okay. So we take that out. Um, as you can see, the bootloader is flashed. Okay. So now a few extra things. If I reset the chip and hold the button. Let's reset again. Just set a breakpoint. Okay, great. We got a breakpoint. Okay. So if I hold this button and tap over, you'll see pin state change to set. And apparently it does work. Let's see. Maybe I held the wrong button. So we step over. And now because I held the button, we are back in the bootloader. And apparently that hard faulted. Okay we hold the button down okay and we're at system in net we step over over why are we hard faulting let's just put a breakpoint there take that breakpoint away we hold the button again reset the chip and we hard fault huh there a global around here. I'm having a hard time believing that we're hard faulting not reset okay we run the bootloader we go again Okay, so that round it worked. I had to reflash the chip. Let's check if the application is still there. Doesn't seem like it. There isn't value there. Let me just double check if I'm not overriding the application itself. No, I don't want to be a project explorer. Of course. Uh, or this is before the application itself and let me just check i think i'm overwriting the bootloader itself this linker i'll change the origin to 19k and it's gonna complain probably that it can't fit which is old yep can't fit so we go to properties optimization we optimize for size in our c compiler and our c plus plus compiler we optimize for size and we see if we can debug this i don't know if the debug symbols are still 
install there. Mm, looks like it. Okay. Let's flash the application again. Okay. Now, if I reset, hold the button. Yeah, that's exactly what was happening. This value was inside the bootloader itself. So I was overwriting a value inside the bootloader. And by chance, it was at the area of the spin state check. When it does its return. No, I'm lying. I'm lying like a cheap watch. It was messing with one of the startup functions. Let's see this libc init array, which initializes all your globals and stuff like that. The stuff you need before you enter main. So it was messing with this array and causing the STM32 to crash. So what I did was reduce the size of the application itself here. You can see the application is 15 kilobytes in use. So if I go to the linker, increase to 20 and do a bulb, it does not fit. Well, it fits, but if I change the optimization to dash OG and then also for C and I build the application, you can see over here, it goes all the way to 19 kilobytes. So if I was writing this magic number to the end of the flash, it would have worked, but not at the start of the flash, which I'm currently doing. So this is the start of the last page in this flash memory. So this, this flash memory, last page, is contained within this 97% of the application itself. Okay, all right. So that's a short introduction to, to making a USB bootloader. A like, share, comment, and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.